First off, I want to give a huge thanks to The Ridge for sponsoring this video. More on that later. In KSP, there are a class of parts called the couplers, which as the name suggests can detach themselves from your spacecraft. They are intended to be used in staging events, such as detaching spent rocket boosters, but they also provide some impulse themselves. Of course, as with anything that can provide Delta B, the next obvious question is can we get to orbit using these decouplers? So I set out and after some experimentation, I built this thing here. Now if you just want to see the final result, feel free to skip to this timestamp for the full run. But before you do that, first I'd like to tell you a story of how I came to this design, and hopefully you'll learn some new physics on the way. This story begins with S.W. Dennis. A while back he uploaded this video, where he showed getting to orbit with decouplers. It's a really cool video and showcases something that seems impossible in KSP, even with a modded game that S.W. Dennis was running. I highly recommend you check it out. That said, this video does use mods to scale up the decouplers to give the impulse needed to reach orbit. Is this possible to do without mods? Let's look into it. First, let's look at the decouplers in KSP. We have a variety of options, different masses and ejection forces. Here are some examples. This smallest decoupler here has a mass of 10 kilograms and an ejection force of 50. The 3.75 meter decoupler here has a mass of 360 kilograms and an ejection force of 200. The hydraulic detachment manifold has a mass of 400 kilograms and an ejection force of 450. And so on. Alright, so we've got this handful of decouplers now. In order to build a rocket, we'd like to do some math to help us figure out how many decouplers we actually need. However, we have a small problem. KSP reports an ejection force for the decoupler, which doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't make sense for this to be a force like a rocket engine since this decoupling process is instantaneous in KSP. When you fire a decoupler, the velocity goes from zero to its final velocity in just one frame. Fortunately, there is a real-life physics concept that can help here. Impulse. Impulse is the integral of force over time. For a constant force, it is simply force times the time. On its own, this isn't really useful since we don't know the time the force is applied during the decoupling process. However, fortunately, impulse is related to momentum. It turns out, the impulse is equivalent to the change in momentum, where momentum here is just mass times velocity. So, if we can fire a payload using a decoupler, and then measure its resulting velocity, we can then calculate the impulse of the decoupler. Once we know this, we can calculate the delta V for any given payload mass which will be helpful for our delta V calculations. To measure this velocity, I placed various decouplers loaded with a 40 kilogram projectile on the launch pad, and then hacked gravity and removed the atmosphere to eliminate gravity and drag losses. Then I fired the decouplers, immediately paused the game, and measured the projectile's resulting velocity. And from this, we can calculate the impulse. So here are the results. Interesting. It seems that the impulse is 10 times higher than the reported ejection force. Why doesn't the decoupler just report this impulse? Who knows? My best guess is that the force is actually reported in kilonewtons and is applied for a time of 0.01 seconds. This would provide the same impulse that I'm measuring, but I can only guess at this. Anyway, let's compare the decouplers and see which one is best for a decoupler rocket. If we compare the impulse to mass ratio of the decouplers, there is a clear winner. The TT-38K decoupler provides the highest impulse for the lowest mass. So let's calculate how much delta V we can get out of a decoupler rocket. Here is the equation for each stage that we found earlier. We want the total delta V of course, so we need to make this into a sum and perform an iterative calculation. We can do the iteration in a spreadsheet. First, we will define the decoupler mass, the decoupler impulse, and the final payload mass. For this example, let's use a payload of 90 kilograms, which is the mass of a small probe core and a reaction wheel. Next, let's define some columns, 
and then write the equation itself to do the iterative calculation. Then we'll just add some more rows and see how the total delta V changes. First five stages look good, we get a total of 96 meters per second from this. With 10 stages, we have 144 meters per second. Now well, let's keep going. With 64 stages, we get 307 meters per second? I feel like we're hitting some kind of limit here. 64 stages is already a lot, and we aren't going very fast. Just to make sure these calculations are correct, I built a 64 stage decoupler rocket in KSP and set it off. 64 decoupling events later, and we are at a velocity of 305 meters per second. So it seems like the impulse math I did was pretty close. I guess, let's keep going. What about 2000 decouplers? Only 647 meters per second? What about 3000? 687? Okay, we have hit a lot of diminishing returns here. I think we're seeing why SW Dennis used mods for this. There is just no way we are doing this with a serially staged decoupler rocket. Even after 3,000 decouplers, we are still nowhere close to the 3,000 meters per second about that we need to reach orbit. Hold on though, series staging isn't the only way to stage decouplers. We could also place several decouplers on the same part and fire them all at once. If we do this, we can gain the impulse from the decoupler without needing to carry a large mass of decouplers with us. Using this approach, let's see how many decouplers you would need to reach 3000 meters per second. For the same 90 kilogram payload, we need an impulse of 270,000 newton seconds. Since each decoupler provides 2,500 newton seconds of impulse, that would mean we would only need 108 decouplers. Wow, this is already looking much better. Does this actually work though? Let's give it a shot. And yes, it does work! So this is our ticket to orbit. By firing all the decouplers at the same time instead of one after another, we can leave all that decoupler mass behind and gain the maximum velocity for our impulse. Of course the only downside is the slightly higher g-forces, but I'm sure our pilot won't mind. So using this newfound knowledge, I built this thing. Okay, it looks kind of strange, but let's unpack this. On the bottom, we have 832 hydraulic detachment manifolds which are attached to the fairing up here. While the hydraulic detached manifold is actually one of the heaviest decouplers, it doesn't actually matter since we aren't taking the mass of them with us. Since it has the highest impulse of any of the decouplers, it makes for a great first stage. Before we fire them though, we need to transfer our pilot bill from the command pod to the airlock in the fairing. I used an airlock here because it is simply the lowest mass method of transporting a Kerbal. Once our pilot is comfortable in his airlock, we simply stage the couplers and we are off at 1,173 meters per second. This is just barely enough to get us above the edge of space at 70 kilometers. After leaving the atmosphere, we detach the fairing and reveal the second stage, which consists of 88TT-38K radial decouplers. The reason I'm using these decouplers is that, unlike the first stage, we do actually care about the mass of the decouplers, since we had to carry these with us. Once at apoapsis, we can just point this at the horizon, and then stage. And well, there you go. We now have an orbit we've successfully reached low carbon orbit with only the impulse provided by decouplers. Let's get Bill out to enjoy the view. All right, final part of the mission. Let's get Bill home. 
Normally, if you try to deorbit a Kerbal, they'll overheat ease quickly from the reentry heating. However, if we combine arrow braking with the RCS pack to slow down, we can just barely get the Kerbal down safely. At this point, it's now just a quick glide over to the island runway. We're gonna gracefully land Bill in the control tower. And well, there you have it. With that graceful landing, we have returned from orbit. Thank you for watching, and a huge thanks to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. The Ridge Wallet is a light, sleek, and industrial replacement for the bulky wallets of the past. Unlike traditional wallets, it doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your pockets, and as a result, it's much lighter and more space efficient. It seriously changed my pocket situation. Here's my old wallet for comparison. Most people are still using wallets like these, carrying around old receipts, gift cards, and other stuff in an unorganized mess. I'll admit I was one of those people too. So here's what you get when you switch to the Ridge Wallet. The wallet itself has room for up to 12 cards plus cash. You have a selection of 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber, which is shown here, and burnt titanium. It is made of durable materials that are guaranteed to last. The Ridge team stands behind their product and offers a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and carry it for life. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it in fact, they will let you try it for 45 days, and if you aren't satisfied, you could send it back for a full refund. I actually do really like this product, and I have replaced my old wallet with it. But don't just take my word for it, also consider their 30,000 five-star reviews. If you're interested, get 10% off today, with free worldwide shipping and returns, by going to ridge.com s75. That's ridge.com s75 and use the code S75. Link in the description. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.